Well, I thought this would be a good place to stop or start, depending on your viewpoint. Um, I pull the alternator. Now, this is the way it faces towards the front of the motor with the serpentine belt on this side. Remember, we discussed removing the belts. So basically, there's two bolts up front on top, which are easy to see. And then there's also two bolts in the front. I leave the bracket on and take it out as one piece. Um, also, on the back, you want to remove the harness. And to do so, you're going to have um, a small bolt here holding in this harness. And then this nut will be underneath the plastic wing. Just flip it up and you'll be able to get to these bolts. But don't forget this little 10 millimeter bolt because it holds this whole harness on. You don't want to rip uh, the connectors apart. So there's the alternator. And that just slides right out the front once the radiator's out. And then the power steering has two main bolts. And this is a 14 millimeter and it goes right through here. And then the second bolt is the uh, adjustment bolt, which goes right in here. And so you'll want to undo both of those, and that just comes right out. So once you have those out, the belts come right off. And once the belts are off, you'll see that I've also removed the timing cover, and there's the idler pulley for the uh, serpentine belt. And I also removed the front heat shield. And the primary reason for doing that is, if you look in here, back in the back, there's where the O2 sensor was. So uh, pull that off without any problem. Um, I usually keep a piece of cardboard between here and the rest of the motor when I do this work so you don't damage the evaporator. So I took it out so that uh, we could do some filming, but it's sitting over there in the corner. It's always a good idea just to keep it protected so you don't damage it. Um, I'm trying to remember, I believe that's a 5 8 on the O2 sensor. That's not metric. So. Uh, That'll help you get that off. And then you'll also see here is the top of the alternator harness. And there's that flip cap I was telling you about for that nut. So that just snaps down on top. And then there's the bolt hole for that harness I was telling you about. And then of course the bottom plug. And then the top plug goes to the O2 sensor and that's color coded. And I've already pulled the O2 sensor out of the front. You also see I removed the two timing belt covers. Uh, not rocket science. There's about one, two, three bolts here, and then another two here. So uh, take the covers off. Now, now I'm at the stage where <coughs> I need to uh, remove the motor mount. So um, in order to do so, uh, I'm going to line up the marks on the crank first. And if you notice right here, uh, there's one dot right there. And then the other dot is right here. So this isn't lined up. And if you look inside there, you'll see two arrows. Let me see if I can get some light on this. There we go. See those arrows in the back? Those will need to line up with the gears before we tear this apart. So you do this on the front and the back. That was easier to see, but we've got to do the motor mount. And in order to do the motor mount, I thought it'd be easier to show you here is I take two 10 inch pieces of plywood, three quarter inch, and um, this top piece is nine and a quarter inch. And then <coughs> make sure that these sit on top, below, on, um, sit below this piece so that the load is carried by here. And if you notice, I've also put a cross member in there and then I've glued that all in place and you let it dry for a while and that actually makes for a very strong structure. And uh, you see, I've got this sitting on my lawnmower, but um, it's mocked up on an oil pan. So that way you can support the motor without um, damaging the oil pan. So use either a um, hydraulic jack, bottle jack, whatever you have to adjust it. Or just cut wood in length to uh, sit on top of a rest. Anyway, but you are going to have to be able to jack this up three inches or so to uh, get the motor mount off. And uh, so make sure you don't make this too wide. This is five inches. And um, although you'd like to make some cross supports here, as much as you have to jack up the car, this is just an easier way of doing it. So uh, there's the inside of it. Very crude, but it'll save you an oil pan and uh, safely support the motor while you remove the motor mounts. So that's where we're going to stop now. And uh, next time you'll see as the motor is supported, the rest of the timing covers off and the uh, motor mount should be complete. So 
stay tuned and I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you do, subscribe and there will be many more to follow. Thank you. Well, P.S. I forgot I did take off the rear shield as well. I didn't actually remove it. I just unbolted the three bolts for it and that allowed me to get to the rear O2 sensor which is bunged right there. And uh, this O2 sensor was very loose, so he had a leak here, so I'm not surprised the car didn't run very well. So that's the second leak I've found taking this car apart. So uh, if nothing else, these 60,000 services help you catch things that you normally wouldn't touch because you think everything's copacetic. So anyway, um, stay tuned and subscribe if you'd like to follow with the rest of the videos.